file real quick. Well, good morning, all. Um, I want to uh, welcome everybody. Um, on the line, we have uh, Otis Pierce, who is with the ESU 7, and he's going to share with us um, what his knowledge and his, his uh, skills on the uh, Chromebooks. So I want to thank Otis for taking his time this morning for that. Uh, we are recording the session. So um, it will be on the Three Rivers uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to come back and take a look at it or you want to see what else is going on, that's great. Um, it'll be there for you. So Otis, you want to go ahead and take off? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me today. I appreciate you reaching out. And I'm understanding that some folks are or thinking about Chromebooks or have gone to Chromebooks already or want to know just a little bit more about what a Chromebook can do um, compared to a, a normal computer, um, whether it be a desktop, a laptop, whatever it might be. So kind of hoping uh, out of this session, uh, before I get into talking about myself a little bit, uh, hopefully you'll be able to define what a Chromebook is and does because uh, it is slightly different, but very slightly the same as well. There are some similarities and differences. Uh, be able to list some pros and cons for Chromebooks in your library and also list pros and cons for Chromebooks versus uh, a PC or a Mac uh, computer uh, in your library as well. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am just began uh, a couple days ago my eighth year at ESU 7 in Columbus uh, as a PD coordinator. Um, I started out as tech integration and then it, it's kind of evolved. I saw myself on the PD side as it was anyway. Uh, a lot of other things as well, uh, but mostly helping teachers integrate technology into the classroom. Um, I'm also a media coordinator, our production department coordinator. So um, I go out and share all the fun copyright things with, uh, with teachers and they're going, oh shoot, uh, we should not be doing that, uh, which is also makes it fun a little bit as well. Uh, prior to the service unit, I taught for 13 years in Sutherland, Nebraska. Uh, I was a 712 math teacher and coach, uh, and that was my only teaching job before I came to the service unit. Um, so uh, that is a little bit about uh, me and what I do here at the service unit. Uh, I do have a little bit of a disclaimer here, uh, dealing with librarians and everything. All the images I am using, I'm using with permission as a Google education trainer. Uh, all these come from Google. I'm able to use these as, an, as a certified education trainer, which I have been for seven years now uh, with Google. So uh, everything is on the down low, or if I'm using some other pictures, they are from Pixabay, which are Creative Commons zero attribution, but I still have links to them as well. Uh, you will, I will at the end of this presentation as well, give you a link to this slide deck. Uh, so you will have it as well, along with the recording, so you can kind of go through some of those pieces a little bit with yourself, which I also have some notes, uh, just little places uh, as well in those. Um, so what is a Chromebook? Uh, and people can sometimes ask, well, what's the difference between a Chromebook and a computer? Well, a Chromebook is just like a laptop or a computer. Uh, it can also be, turn into a tablet, a uh, rotating tablet, kind of like some uh, PCs will be able to do. Macs don't quite do some of that. Uh, if you want the tablet version, you actually have to go with an iPad uh, if you're wanting that. But what's nice about it, uh, the price range, uh, you can get one for $250 or you can get one up to $900. Uh, some of your touch screen flips, uh, 360 ones as they call them, uh, are up in $200 or $900 range. You can get some nice ones down around $250. Uh, a lot of the schools that I see in our service unit that are going to Chromebooks are getting about that $250 to $300 Chromebook, and then they pay a little bit of extra that attaches it to their Google domain uh, to be able to do some of the control. Uh, the brands, uh, they're out there. There's the Asus, Lenovo, HP, Samsung, Dell. Uh, there are quite a few out there. Uh, a lot of schools stick with like the ACE, these that I've just uh, named right here. Uh, and one thing that the Chromebook does do, all it does is run Google Chrome. Uh, if you use a web browser, Chrome, uh, that's what it runs. All it does is connect to the internet, period. That's it. Uh, there is a little bit of storage, but not a lot. So it's not like you can download things and put it on there. 
Uh, you log in using a Gmail account or as a guest. So it could just be a regular Gmail account. Uh, if you have, say, school students come in that aren't necessarily one-to-one -one, or elementary kids, middle school kids, sometimes they don't let them take their devices home. They could come into your library, log in with their school Gmail account, and be right in and be working right then and there. Uh, so all it allows you to do really is browse the web. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of um, application you're working on. Google has done some things that now you can edit in Microsoft uh, in Google Drive, uh, which is kind of the documents, spreadsheets, presentations. Um, I'm using a Google slide presentation right now. Uh, so it'll allow them to do uh, a lot of those things. One thing that there is with Chromebooks, um, as with any device, it's called an end of life. Uh, Chromebooks, it depends on what it is. In this example, uh, a Chromebook 11, which is an 11 inch screen. Um, if I remember, I can't remember what, oh, this is an HP. Uh, 11 inch screen G6 double E it's technically it's end of life or when it stops updating the operating system is going to be November of 2023. Um, you can see some 2025 ones in there. Um, when you get the slide deck, um, the speaker notes in this one has the link to this end of life chart for all of the devices. Uh, so that's basically when it stops updating, just like you have to update the operating system on a Mac, uh, on a PC. Uh, that's what it does. They do those security updates every now and then. You just turn on the auto update. It'll auto update those Chromebooks fairly easily for you. Um, you know, and most of them you can see are five, seven years out. The newer ones, it's about seven years um, that they're there. It's, it's up to you, but you know, seven, $300 for seven years, I, that's a pretty good investment uh, as well with those. One thing uh, that Chromebooks don't do, or several things they don't do, they don't run Firefox. They don't run something like iMovie or, or the PC, or same thing, GarageBand, uh, movie editing. They don't run Office, uh, unless it is Office 365. Uh, you can get on there because that is a web-based deal. So if they're doing Office 365, they have that web-based version. Google Chrome will run that uh, as well. Or any other type of software that is not web-based. Anything that's done on a Chromebook pretty much has to be web-based. Not pretty much. It has to be web-based, period. Uh, that's all it will run. Um, it does have uh, USB ports. Uh, it does have presentation ports, which we'll talk about here in a little bit as well. So that's quite a little bit of information here in the first little bit. Those that are on uh, from kind of what I've talked about of what a Chromebook is, the Chrome operating system with the end of life and some of the things that it does and doesn't do. Uh, are there any questions so far um, that may have come up? I'm uh, I'm monitoring the uh, the chats. If you don't have a microphone or whatever, uh, let me type it into the chat things, and I'll be glad to relay those questions out. Um, let me ask a couple of questions then, uh, Otis. One is when you talked about the end of life being. Mm -hmm. 2020 does that mean that the device has no value there is no there's no it's not going to be good for anything well it'll still run uh it'll still work past this time it's just that the operating system doesn't update so those bugs and fixes that may come up and security updates no longer work you could probably sell it um but it's going to be you know, you're not going to get the $250, $300 if that's what you're, what you're doing. You may get $25, $30 out of it um, as you're doing it, but it can also be there. It, it's still useful. It'll still work. Uh, it's just a matter of the operating system won't update. Okay. So that um, I can still use it for the thing. Let me give you another example. Uh, uh, Microsoft said that um, Windows 7 they were no longer going to maintain it um, after what last year was it? Um, or is I it believe that's right. Something like that. So, but you can still run seven on your computer, and it still works if you don't want to update it. 
basically that that's what you're saying. That's correct. That's correct. But you know, with this, with Chrome, you auto update it. Um, otherwise up in the top right hand corner of your Chrome web browser, there are usually three dots. Those will turn some other color or there'll be something comes up and says, Hey, something needs to be updated. Um, but okay. if you turn on auto updates, when you shut down and restart it or whatever, it'll automatically update for you. Okay. Um, then the other thing about this is the um, network, without the network, will the device run? Can I still use it for word processing uh, without um, the network? Let's say my, well, you talked a little bit earlier about when we had the flooding and Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the school districts lost their links to the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, was the device dead at that point, not usable? No, um, but sometimes some of the things with Google, they ha need to make sure they have offline docs set up uh, so that they can work offline. Um, I have used that before where I can, I, of course I had a regular laptop, but it'll, it works the same way on a Chromebook. Being able to work on a document without internet access and then once you get internet access, it automatically updates the dock. Um, I did that flying it on a plane at about 30,000 feet at about 600 miles an hour working on a Google doc uh, okay. as I was working. So it will still work. Um, you're able to do the, the word processing with Google docs and everything, but you know, you're not going to be able to go anyplace else. Okay. Uh, one of the libraries has a note here on the chat. It talks about they have four Chromebooks and printing is their biggest challenge. They have to save the document, then log into their Gmail account, then print it from there. Um, there's got to be a better, easier way to do that without so many steps. Mm -hmm. um, the problem that she's having is the tech support she has is not real familiar with the Chromebooks. And so they're having a little bit of a problem with that. Well, there is cloud printing. Google has cloud printing options. Uh, and that's kind of how it's done, uh, where you can send that and, it, and you have to have those printers that have that capability as well um, to be able to do that and, and set up. Um, I have not set that up. So I don't know what that process would look like. Uh, it's mostly done with our our network operations folks help out with that. But I know you can print from a Chromebook uh, just as long as you have that cloud printing capability set up. Okay, so uh, they need to be talking with their tech support to talk about cloud printing. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. That would be That's the way all the questions I have right now, unless there's some others that came up. Okay, let's move on, go Otis. All right, uh, some pros and cons of Chromebooks. Uh, cause I know there are pros and cons to anything. There are pros and cons to Chromebooks. There are pros and cons to PC desktops. There are pros and cons to Mac desktops. There are pros and cons to the, the brand of device. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that we talk about when we go out to schools and I'm helping schools decide what device should we do. It's a matter of what you want to do with it and then find a device that meets what you're wanting to do with it as well. One of the pros is no viruses. You don't, have to worry about having viruses in a Chromebook because all it runs is the Google Chrome operating system, which just connects to the web. Um, you know, so you don't have to worry about those virus things or those virus protection pieces with it. <coughs> it is lightweight and portable. Um, when I first started the service unit seven years ago, I had one of the old MacBook Pros that had the, the CD drive uh, the bottom case was probably about a half inch thick um, and was heavy. It was very heavy. Uh, I went to a conference uh, in San Antonio, uh, which actually starts this weekend, uh, ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education Conference um, in San Antonio, and I had a Chromebook. I sw swapped it out for the Chromebook, which was a lot lighter. Um, so it could be portable around your library. Uh, for people, if they don't want to sit at a desk, they want to go sit in a comfy chair, uh, go sit on the floor someplace. They're able to do that as well. Um, some of them do have a security lock slot, so you can uh, lock them to a certain place, uh, but that lock is a little bit of an extra cost. Uh, so that is an option right there, uh, what is a, which is a good thing. So there's that security piece. 
Um, this is kind of a pro and a con. It connects to the web only. Uh, just because it, some people may want to do some type of video editing um, that they actually need some type of software for that's not web-based. Because some of the web-based things um, may not do what they're wanting to do um, on that as well. So it, that's kind of a pro and a con. Uh, but also only connecting to the web, you don't have to buy that other software either uh, for those devices if they don't already come with them. Uh, as we just kind of talked about a little bit, the pros and the cons are printing, printing documents. Um, it's a little tougher uh, to print from there. Um, I know a lot of our schools are having troubles with shifting to this as well if they're going to the Chromebooks. Um, because we always hear of a, hey, we're going to go to paperless. Um, you know, you're never going to get, as I say, you're never going to get to paperless because there's no possible way we can get go places without paper. But we can always get to less paper. You know, uh, don't have to print out a, a 20 page research paper that you can, you can read and, and annotate and talk about online. Uh, rather than printing those out, uh, it's helping save some paper that way as well. So that printing is kind of a pro and a con. It's that cloud-based printing uh, that's there with it that you have to do and have those cloud-based printers uh, as well to do that. So some differences, kind of talking Chromebooks and um, it, a, a Mac PC uh, desktop type version as well. Um, Chromebooks only connect to the web. PCs, they run multiple programs. Uh, if you're going with a full-blown computer, they're gonna be able to run a multitude of programs that you can put in there. But as I said before, you know, if you're only connecting to the web, you're not having to pay for Microsoft Office. Um, oh, I'm gonna call it Camtasia, which is a video editing software. You're not gonna have to pay for GarageBand. You're not gonna have to pay for all those other devices. You're not gonna have to pay for a virus like a Sophos uh, antivirus or a, a McAfee antivirus piece with it as well. Um, both have web, webcams. Um, some of the desktops PCs may, may not have that. You may have to have an external webcam or something with that or some type of external device uh, to be able to do that. But Chromebooks have the webcam. Some of those Chromebooks, if they don't rotate 360, their webcam will rotate uh, to show the backside of it as well. It just depends on the, on the device that you get uh, with those. Uh, Chromebooks, uh, four gig, eight gig of memory, uh, but there's no hard drive space. Uh, so that memory is mostly for running that operating system. Whereas PCs and Macs, um, how much memory do you wanna buy and how much do you wanna pay for it is really what it, what it comes down to. Do you want a, um, a 256 gig hard drive or do you want a 512 gig hard drive or, you know, so, or do you want a terabyte uh, of memory as well? So there are a lot of different options there. Um, and obviously the more memory you have in uh, a full blown computer, the more it's going to cost you uh, as well. Uh, some other differences here, Chromebooks mobile uh, can use in multiple places in the library. Desktops are pretty much confined to where you want to do where you want to put them. Uh, of course, if you have the laptop version of it, uh, having those locks and everything as well, um, they're still able to move around a little bit. But the desktops are kind of a, a static, a static thing uh, there with that. So when we're talking about pros and cons and differences, uh, have any other questions uh, come up? You're muted, Eric. Uh, a couple of things, um, Otis. A lot of the libraries work with older, older patrons. Mm -hmm. uh, the question of being able to see, um, being able to manipulate keyboards, be able to uh, mice, mm -hmm. you know, in order to do point devices, those kinds of things. How? Uh, how can we help our older patrons or how will these fit in with the older patrons that we have in our, in our libraries? Well, I think they'll fit just fine, Eric, because Chromebooks, I, I just gave an example, you know, of, of the 11 inch screen when I was talking end of life. There are some that have 15 and 17 inch screens. 
uh, and you can zoom in and out on those screens as well. Um, I do talk about it uh, here in a little bit too, but you can add periphery devices like a mouse, um, an external keyboard as well, uh, connect it to a projector or, a, or a, even an external monitor. Um, you're able to do those things. So if they're, you're, some older patrons may need that a little bit bigger, you connect it to an external monitor uh, and you have that right there that gives them a little bit bigger. If you need like a 24, 25 inch monitor, um, there you're able to do that as well. You talked about no viruses. Uh, under those of us that have E-rate, and I know you, you schools have the E-rate too, mm -hmm. um, how does the filtering systems work that for, our, for those of us that have E-rate uh, got issues but work with E-rate? Just like your computers do now. Same type of filtering, filtering pieces that, that your computers do now. You run them right through the filter. All our schools run them through their school filter. Um, so you can do it the exact same way that you're currently doing it. So if we connect to like Genoa and Bancroft and uh, some of the others, if they connect to the schools, will they be able to use those filtering or do they need to talk to their ISP for that filtering? Um, that I don't know the answer to Eric. Uh, I think you could talk to both because uh, it depends on how they have that filter set up possibly with those E-rate things, the way that they're doing that right there. Um, if they're through the schools, they're probably going through the school filter uh, just on some different uh, policies uh, that's allowing a little bit more than what the kids will get to, but it's still going to still gonna filter out your porn and, and things like that as well. Uh, if you're not through a school, then you're going to have to go through your ISP uh, to see what the filtering is and, and how you have it set up currently. Otherwise, it's going to work the same way uh, that you have it. Um, in the PC environment and the Mac environment, memory within the systems are key to keeping speed up and functioning mm -hmm. speed. Um, without a without memory or additional memory in the in the Chromebooks, how is that? Is that going to slow things down if everything is off the network? You know, it drives the speed of processing back and forth and and no. traffic on the network and those kinds yeah. of. It's just however fast your network is. How many things do you have hitting your network at the same time? You know, because if you, if you think about it, if you have 10 devices on, let's just say, a 100 meg line, each one's getting 10 megs. Up to, anyway. It, it depends on how fast it is. So it's speed, it really isn't an issue, and it's just like anything else. However much stuff you have open, if you have 50 tabs open, it's going to slow you down. Um, just like if you have 50 tabs open on a, on a PC or a Mac, it's going to slow it down uh, as well. So I think it just, it just depends. Speed is still pretty good with them, uh, even though they don't have as much memory. Uh, the speed is still up there depending on where they're hitting the Internet at that time. So one of the things that the libraries need to be well aware of before they move into this environment is their speed on their network, DSL. If I have 10 PCs on, or 10 uh, Chromebooks on a DSL line, I'm probably not gonna be satisfied with the processing speed. Is that probably a fa safe statement? Yeah, probably the same if you have 10 PCs on that same DSL line. Okay. okay. So, um, and, and knowing one thing, it's a lot easier with, with Chromebooks, we'll hook up to Wi-Fi. Um, you'll need the Wi-Fi piece with your Chromebooks. Uh, it's a little harder to hardwire. Um, you know, plug that that Cat6 cable in. Uh, it can be done, but you got to have the dongle to do it. And those dongles can get pulled out and misplaced or taken um, as well. So I need an extra piece to connect the hardwire onto the network. Right, or if you're going to um, say an external monitor, you're gonna need a little dongle that goes in. And a lot of Chromebooks now are going USB-C. They're Which going with the USB-C. Very little, the micro, the micro connectors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those connectors, depending on what you're doing, are all extra costs as well. Okay, okay, great. I think that's all for right now, Otis. Okay, yeah, go Lisa. Um, 
Uh, when we turn off our, our hardwired, our computers, it immediately erases whatever anybody has installed on it or used it for. So if somebody's doing their bank account or something, that's all erased once we turn it off. Do mm -hmm. Chromebooks work the same way? Yeah, because they'll log, they have to log in using some type of Google account, uh, whether it's a, a personal Gmail, a gmail.com account, or if somebody has a school account, um, you know, like ours, some of ours are schoolname.esu7.org, then they log out of it. Nobody can get in on that one right there because you have to log in with your own Gmail account. Now, if they leave themselves logged in, yeah, they're going to be able to see it. But if they log in as a guest, um, the guest is almost, um, it used to be called incognito mode, uh, <laughs> but now it's the guest mode. So, or on an Apple, like if you have an uh, iPhone or something, you can get into that private mode. So um, that incognito or guest mode, it does not track search history. Uh, it does not save passwords. Uh, so if they just come in as a guest, it's gone. It, it does not keep track of those things. Okay, good. And then um, on the security, uh, you said something about a, a security thing. Uh, is that an expensive addition to it? Because I don't want somebody, we're just a one person thing. If I go into the bathroom for a second, I could lose anything. Yeah, it's, I want to, I looked, I think it probably depends on the device, but I'm going to say it's no more than 30 to $50. Oh, even. okay. Okay. No, it's, it's not a two, $300 yeah. thing that's going to be more than the Chromebook. No. Um, I, I want to say 30 to 50. Okay. Uh, um, Otis per device. Yes. Okay. So if I have 10 of them, I got to have three, I got to have 10 of those things at $30 a piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm thinking about getting one, uh, getting one Chromebook for the library. So yeah. it's not going to be a horrible cost. No, no. All okay. Right. Anybody else? Okay, let's go on, Otis. All righty. Um, so when you're thinking about going to Chromebooks, and, and this is the second time you've seen this picture. This is a good friend of mine, Christina Ishmael, and these are off of Pixabay. You're not uh, sharing that. She has a lot of these on, on NDE. Um, Otis, you're not sharing. Uh, it says I'm sharing. I yeah, see your seeing. stuff. Okay. Are you seeing? I, I'm seeing the lady with the big beads. Yeah, her. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm not, but that's okay. Go you ahead. You might have a second window, Eric. You might have. Yeah, that's windows. what I was just looking for. Go uh, ahead. So when you're thinking about going to Chromebooks or PCs, it, it's personal library preference. It's what you want to do. Um, you know, I'm not here to say you should be doing this. Um, this, is, this is your choice. Uh, Erica just asked me to kind of share what is a Chromebook? What does it do? What can it do? Um, you know, it's, it's up to you what you're wanting to do. You know, and like Lisa said, you know, she's thinking about getting one for the library. There's no problem getting one, trying it out, and see if it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but you have that device there as well. Uh, so what can you connect a Chromebook to? We kind of talked about this a little bit, uh, but you can use a USB or Bluetooth mouse or keyboard um, as well. So you can just go ahead and connect those in because it does have some USB 2.0 slash US uh, slash 3.0. So uh, the regular plugins on the side, it's not the USB-C uh, ones, just like if you were to have a, a, a thumb drive, basically. Uh, is the easiest way to explain that. Uh, you can plug in a monitor or a projector with either HDMI or VGA. Uh, so if your monitor is coming out with an HDMI, some, some of those automatically have HDMI ports already in them. Uh, or you can buy that external dongle, which is maybe 10, 15 bucks, uh, I think, uh, on those. Uh, you may need that, as I said, that USB-C dongle. Uh, to be able to do that. That's just going to depend on the device that you get, uh, that you decide to go with. Um, we kind of talked about this filtering. It'll filter just like a uh, normal uh, computer would. It was the best filter I could find uh, <laughs> when I was looking through Pixabay. Uh, so, hey, it, it gets the point across. Um, 
you know, it'll work whether you're going through the school or whether you're going through your regular filter with your dealing with E-rate. Um, you're just going to do it as you normally would your, your regular computers that you already have. Uh, it's completely and totally up to you. So uh, hopefully that's um, kind of my presentation here is, you know, hopefully you can define kind of what a Chromebook is and what it does. Um, you can list the pros and cons of a Chromebook for you and your library uh, and list the pros and cons for a Chromebook versus Mac PC in your library. As I said, when I go out to schools, mine is already always, what do you want to do with the device? Um, what are you wanting the students to do with the device? And then go out and find a device that meets that. I think that might be something to look at when you're in your library. What do we want our patrons to be able to do on the devices that we get? List that out. Uh, and then go and find a device that matches that. If a lot of it is web-based things and, or pretty much 95 to 100% web-based, even 90, it's your choice, then a Chromebook is a great option for you. Um, if it's some of those that you're wanting some more of those, those applications uh, that need a computer, then you go get a computer. And who's to say you can't have two, three Chromebooks, and four or five desktops. There's nothing that says you can't do that uh, as well. So it's completely and totally up to you. Any last questions, comments, concerns? Go ahead, Lisa. Um, now, I have a lot of older pa patrons who come in and they want to get their email and they want to print things off. Uh, do they have to have a, a, a Gmail account to use a Chromebook? No, there's an option to log in as a guest. Oh, okay. That's the login as a guest. Okay. Yep. There's either login with a Gmail or you can log in as a guest. Okay. Because I'm just sure nobody's going to want to change their way of life. Yeah. And that's completely fine. Yeah. There's that guest option to log in as well. Okay. We have people who come in and want to type their Christmas letters and then print it off. And so mm -hmm. somehow I've got to be able to do that if I use a Chromebook. Well, and, and with the printing, you got to have that cloud printing piece to it uh, and a printer that has some cloud printing capabilities to it. <laughs> um, you know, but they may not to, to type their Christmas letter and print it off. They're without a Gmail account. They're probably going to want to use some type of desktop then. Um, because okay. you got to have that Google account to get into Google Docs to have that word processing, unless they have an Office 365 account, um, which no. I'm guessing they probably don't. So probably having having that option of Chromebook or desktop is That's a good my option. thinking, mm -hmm. is to have both. And we have beautiful Macs now for the kids at, to use at school for, I mean, for their schoolwork down mm -hmm. here at the library so because we got that sparks grant so mm -hmm. we're able to do that i was thinking of of the ease for some of my other patrons and and the kids know about chromebooks very mm -hmm. well so i was thinking about uh one of each and that way we could take care of with our two max we'd have just about everything we would want yeah yep you know, having that multitude because some people like PC over Mac. Mm, yeah. Um, I was that way. My last six years at Sutherland, we were one to one. The first three of those six, we were PC, and then we were going to Mac. And I said, I don't want to go to a Mac. I'm Ooh. I'm used to PC. <laughs> now I don't want to go back to a PC. Um, you know, at any one time, depending on where I'm going to a school, I could have upwards of four or five Apple devices on me at one time. Mm-hmm. So, I, I have a lot of Apple things, and yeah, but I've been using a PC for quite a while now, so it's kind of I have to get reintroduced or reused to these beautiful Macs over here. Yeah, and I I don't know I'm I'm not a fan of the newer Windows. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've heard that. I'm I I think the last time, well, when I was even going to college, it was the type in you have the C prompt and you type in win to even make it go, you know, you always had to type in at the C prompt, uh, what you wanted it to do. Uh, that's how Ew. I go back with computers and everything. So going through with DOS and, and everything. So. Well, I'm considering, uh, using a, um, 
PC and then and having uh, like uh, Best Buy's uh, geeks be my people mm -hmm. to, to, that I can call up because just the other day we had um, some kids. I wasn't here when that happened, but somehow the picture on the old uh, PC was turned sideways. And and all the writing was all the bottom stuff was here and the mm -hmm. top was over. I don't even know how he did that. How somebody did that? But I had the devil's own time trying to get it. I finally just turned it off, and when it turned on again, then I then it was okay. Yeah. Um, Otis, one of uh, Dakota City says that they leave their Chromebook set up as guest, and then the patrons are able to print. Chromebooks are more like a PC. Chromebooks are more like a PC and have a monitor, keyboard, and mouse versus the Chromebooks, which uh, oh, Chrome boxes. She's got some Chrome oh, boxes. Okay, um, we might talk a little bit about Chrome boxes. Chrome boxes are, are kind of basically the same thing, except you have automatically hook into an external monitor. Um, it's almost just like having the basically. When you got the PC, you got the, the CPU unit, and then you had the, the keyboard that you plugged in, the mouse that you plugged in, the monitor that you plugged in. That CPU box is, is very similar to a Chrome box, and all it runs is Google Chrome as well. Okay, so it's, it's more of a networked arrangement off of a central CPU with multi-users. Correct. Okay. Um, talk a little bit about support. One of the, one of the challenges is as uh, Lisa uh, kind of talked about there was, or yeah, talked about is that we've got some challenges outside about people who know what Chromebooks are and can support Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, what options do, do most of us have? Uh, she talked about using uh, um, Best Buy's Geek Squad and, and mail and voice support people. Mm -hmm. You know, you have kind of the same thing with Google. You also have, can get on, uh, there are a lot of Google support pages. Um, I can't remember if I link some of them in here or not, but you can just type, you know, do a, do a Google search uh, for Chromebook support. Um, I, I will say that probably Chromebooks are, are fairly low maintenance uh, to be able to do. They are fairly low maintenance just because they don't have as much that you can go in system wise and and screw up the screen <laughs> it may be with maybe with some zoom things but that's an easy fix it's it's hold down the control and plus or minus and that zooms it in and out um you know so chromebooks i think are, are fairly low maintenance in that respect um especially if it's that hard you know um chrome boxes i haven't played with a chrome box very much uh but I would, I would say they are similar. Um, and it's, it's going to be your, your typical, let's make sure we keep them clean. Let's treat them right. Um, how well you treat them depends on how long they last. Just like with any other device, how well they're treated is going to depend on how well they're going to last, how long they're going to last. Um, and you can get some versions of the Chromebook uh, that are, were made for education. I guess you could say it is the easiest way. They were made for education and have a little bit more durable outer shell to them uh, is an option as well. Uh, and really, you can go just about any place to get a Chromebook that you would a, a regular desktop. You can go to Walmart. You can go to Amazon, to Best Buy, to Office Max, uh, to CDWG, um, all these different places, Office Net. Uh, you can go to a bunch of different places uh, and get a Chromebook. Uh, you can go to Target, um, Staples. The, so and, the major manufacturers, again, who are who, uh, Otis? Uh, Asus, Dell, Samsung, HP. There are many out there that do the Chromebook. Uh, and a lot of our schools are either going with uh, Asus, Lenovo, uh, HP, Dell, or Samsung are the main ones that our schools are going with. Okay. Um, one of the, you, we, we bring, as you know, we bring the kids in, uh, you know, occasionally, <laughs> mm -hmm. mostly. 
And um, they use the PC setups for gaming and things like that. Are there any particular challenges that we need to think about for uh, those kinds of things? I, I think if kids are wanting to do the gaming, it's going to be the PC side because I don't, there is not enough. I don't mm -hmm. think there is enough probably processing power on a Chromebook to be able to do that. Um, what about Netflix? It'll run it because it's web-based. Okay. Um, and it's going to, that, and once again, that's all going to depend on what's the internet speed you have at your, at your library. Okay. You know, it's yeah, obviously if you're streaming video, it's going to pull your, pull your speed way down uh, with the streaming video. I know there's a, always a spike in our schools that they got to, they got to block some things around the uh, middle to end of March. Um, <laughs> people trying to stream NCAA basketball tournament <laughs> during school time. Uh, you know, so there are some of those things uh, you got to watch out for as well. Okay. Other questions? Anybody else? Anything else, Otis, that you want to share with us? Well, as I said, here is uh, down at the bottom is a, is a bit.ly, uh, a shortened URL uh, to this presentation, uh, making sure it is case sensitive. So the T, R, L, S, and C all do need to be capitalized uh, when you put this in. This will get you to this presentation. Um, and my notes that I had put in there that have some links to some places. And if I remember right, I think I even had some some of the um, images that I have in there may have some links as well to places uh, that you can go and look at those things. So uh, feel free to use this, uh, send this out uh, to other folks that weren't able to join us today as well, Eric. Uh, they're more than happy to get in this. I will not delete this. I will not remove it. Uh, this, is, this will stay up so um, you'll have access to this. Okay. Uh, regardless okay. of where you go. Okay. Anything else from the from the group? Well, thank you, Otis, for your uh, for your time this morning. Yes, we really appreciate your sharing with us. Uh, Chromebooks, I think, make a nice, interesting, cost-effective option for some of our libraries. Perhaps not a total Chromebook environment, but at least some options for us. Yeah, exactly. If you if you're needing a new device but don't have the money to do a full-blown desktop. Let's just say, but you only have maybe four or five hundred dollars. Um, this is it's an option. It's an option that's out there. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. thank you very much, Otis. Thanks for everyone for uh, being part of this uh, this morning. Yep. Glad to help. We'll talk with you later, folks. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Now to get out of here, what do I do?